Express. That Death Ridge Optical number 5T of Ryan Timms. Ryan Timms in the 5T. Kyle Larson coming off of the push vehicle down here into turn number one, the familiar Paul Silva owned number 57. It's the full racing Finley Farms HendrickCars.com machine. And also on the speedway out of Kokomo, Indiana, the chalk sticks, torsion bars, town line variety, Indy race parts, high performance lubricants number 9P. It's the law firm, Parker Price Miller. And getting fired off now down the front straightaway out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Puro Clean Realty Connect Eclipse Claims Consulting number 29 of Emilio Hoover. And last car firing here in this first group of hot laps out of Oklahoma City in the Kramer Farm Seabass Racing Hot Rod Reels number 78. That is Tanner Kahn, winner here with the Oil Capital Racing Series back in March. All cars have fired here. Yeah, Tanner Kahn going to be fun to watch here tonight in that 78 car. Already a winner this year at the Red Dirt Raceway. And it, Dean Mills uh, actually had a timer on the bus. What was that lap time, Dylan? 41.84. He said hand time, so it's unofficial. That is not quick time. That's, uh, we're gonna have to, you're going to have to pick it up, I think, if you want to qualify with these guys. So Tony was, Tony was going to drive the bus. I don't know. Tony, you think you can go faster than that? Guys, let the track come in, OK? Uh, that's you're what not, it is. You're yeah. not going to judge it off track packing, right? I mean, let's, let's not be silly. Let the track come in. Let it speed up a little bit. Let it slow down a little bit. But then give me a shot at it. Let's let's not judge it off making right hand turns right now, okay? Yeah, Fair you're enough. right, Tony. You're right. Sorry about that, man. Sorry for sorry for that. So we got cars pushed off. They're ready to go. We're gonna pack the track in here just a little bit more before we turn them loose here. Looks to be maybe a little bit wet right there. About a lane and a half, two lanes off the wall down here in turns three and four. And Dylan, I always love racetracks that one side, there's no wall. The other side has a wall. That really does play a big difference in how this track shapes up later on. Well, and we were talking too, watching those highlights from the 2020 race. It kind of is sneaky how wide this place can get. We, we both on, you know, on arrival here looking at it, kind of were surprised that it, it, it just doesn't look quite that wide as it got at the end of the feature. So these guys will be right up near the wall in three and four. And then of course, plenty of room in one and two as well as we get the wind them up signal here for our first group of hot laps. Yep, green flag comes out. There you see Kyle Larson. He finished second in that last race at the Red Dirt Raceway with the All-Star Circuit of Champions back in 2020. As the caution lights come back out, we got one of our High Limit Racing officials making his way onto the racetrack here in turn number two. Not sure what is happening there. Oh, we almost had an incident down there between the Highland Racing official and the 9P of Parker Price Miller, but maybe something on the racetrack there as that push vehicle pulls back into the infield, and hopefully we'll get these guys back going in just a moment. And yes, they get the signal from Mike Hess over the one-way communications device to get the cars up to speed, and we are green with Dirt Draft Hot Lap Session number one. Times coming across our screen right now. Fastest at a 12.337 so far is Ryan Timms in the 5T. Timms has some experience here at the Red Dirt Raceway. Was a winner with the USAC Midgets back in 2020. He's overtaken by Tyler Courtney by one one thousandth of a second at a 12.336. Dylan, another thing that's interesting about this racetrack is that flag stand down there. Very, very close to turn number one, but the scoring loop is actually much farther back. It's where that orange cone is in the infield right there in front of that Driven to Save Lives banner. So the start finish line and the actual loop is nowhere near each other uh, here at Red Dirt Raceway. As we look at the times, it looks like Tyler Courtney at that 12.336 fastest so far here in Dirt Draft Hot Laps, followed by Ryan Timms at 12.337. Parker Price Miller third quick at three or 12.385. Kyle Larson in fourth 12.523 and in fifth the 36 Jason Martin at 12.662 track really in pretty good shape 
Yes, and so what we are going to do here is have the drivers kind of pace around nice and slow, pack that racetrack in a little bit, and we see this a lot of times. We'll speed up the lap times considerably here. So, But, yeah, I thought that was quite interesting that the timing loop and the and the flag stand are just – I mean, how far do you think well, that would be? I mean, and I have to imagine the grand – it's kind of where the grandstands end here on the front stretch is just uh, towards turn four of that flag stand, so maybe it's just not to impede the, uh, the sight lines. But that is interesting that uh, – you're not racing all the way down basically into turn number one. You, you, you can kind of shut her down here on the middle of the front stretch like normal. Yeah, that cone that was on your flow screen, that was the one I was talking about where the timing score or the scoring loop is at right there as we go back to green flag racing action here in third draft hot laps. See if the times improve here after that slow wheel packing session. White flag coming out, and times immediately improved down to the 11th second bracket, and we are very close to that track record already. Only three tenths off in the first hot lap session. 11.753 is the time by the 7BC of Sunshine Tyler Cordy now in 11.665. So times getting very close to the track record as Kyle Larson jumps in the second at 11.830. I like our chances maybe for a track record. This is hot lap session number one, and we're two tenths, two and a half tenths off of it. Very, very close. That track record, 11.427. Tyler Courtney's lap time there at 11.665. Want to remind you, the track record does not count if it is not done in qualifying. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it's looking hopeful that that could potentially happen here tonight as we've got the next set of cars rolling onto the racetrack. And first car rolling through the banking of turns three and four is the Lebanon, Indiana racer Spencer Baston aboard the CJB Motorsports True Timber Cambo JRC Transportation Hyperporance Lubricants number five. And outside of him, rolling there into turn number four out of Alice Springs, Northern Territories, Australia. The Mobile One Toyota Racing Development, Roth Enterprises, HR Livestock Transportation number 83, driven by James McFadden. Lined up second row inside here for this second group of hot laps. That's Angola, Indiana, Zeb Wise, the Redeeming Racing Sun Dollar Restoration Ford Performance Sage Fruit number 26 for the driver eighth in High Limit Sprint Car Series points. And from Enum Claw, Washington, the Casey Kane Race with Mike Kerr, Brumos Collection, Factory Kane Shocks, Kane Screen Print number nine. That's Casey Kane. Casey Kane and car number nine. And here on the front stretch, the 39M is Dillsburg, Pennsylvania's Anthony Macri, winner at the Texas Motor Speedway just this past weekend. He's in the C&D rigging JNS Classics Valley Supply, number 39M there, the black car rolling into turn number one. And right behind him from Canton, Illinois, the NOS Energy Drink Zip Bonds, TK Concrete, Logan Contractor Supply, Elliott's Custom Trailers, number 55 of Chris Windham. Chris Windham in car number 55. This is the second of three hot lap groups for Flight A. Hey, and guys, I just want to make a quick point. I talked to Anthony Macri. You see him right there in that number 39 M car. Dylan, you're a driver. Uh, maybe you can have something to add to this. I said, Anthony, how do you learn a track that you've never been to before and you only get three or four laps of hot laps? He looked at me straight in the face and said, I just drive it as hard as I possibly can. And that way I know where the line is. So that's what these guys are looking for here in Hot Lap right now. That's the best way to learn how hard you can push is uh, you want to get close to the limit without going over it. We also missed Jace Park. He's in the 45X on uh, in this Hot Lap group. That's the Johnny Herrera Racing J.B. Henderson construction entry for the Overland Park Kansas racer. You see him there on screen. James McFadden fastest in this Hot Lap session at 12.148 aboard the Roth 83. Wow, the track really slowed, slowed down. down from one session to the next. We were down in the 12 or the 11.6 second bracket. Now at 12.148 from McFadden. Behind him is Zeb Wise at 12.164. Spencer based in third quick at 12.207. Chris Windham fourth at 12.266. And Casey Kane, 12.269. So the track, Mike Hess and Highlander Racing officials are, are happy with it. So those drivers will pull off the track and get ready to go for qualifying later on. Yeah, interesting that it, it fell off half a second there almost just from hot lap session one to two so we'll see what it does here for this third group of hot laps that is hitting the speedway right now rico abreu is the first car here lined up out of turn number four st helena california pilot in the arc zone messiah valley transportation wise agency number 24. 
Also on the racetrack, pulling up next to him in turn number four. That's the driver out of Calera, Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Truck Driving Academy, LS Construction and Roofing, High Plains Building Division, Victory Fuel, Donnie Ray Crawford, Legacy Foundation, number 88R of Ryder LaPlante. Ryder LaPlante in the 88R. Brent Marks is the white car here, just exiting turn number four, third in line. He's out of Myerstown, Pennsylvania, the M&M Painting and Construction, Baps Paints, McGrewBid.com, number 19 for the Myerstown Missile. And returning to his home state here tonight from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, the Dahmer powertrain, Telstar Technologies, Fatheads Eyewear, Maximum Oil, Hobson Family, number 21H, the Macho Man, Brady Bacon. Brady Bacon in the 21H. Just in front of Brady, rolling down the backstretch right now from Lubbock, Texas, the 1C, that's the High Plains Building Division, Carbon Safety Technologies, Lubbock Wrecker Entry, of Brenham Crouch, last year's IRA Sprint Car Champion. It was announced earlier this afternoon that this driver will join the Midweek Money Series on a full-time basis out of Fresno, or sorry, out of Lamore, California. The Honest Abe Roofing Metal Supply Depot, FK Shocks number 16T. That's Cole Macedo. Cole Macedo in the 16T. And final car in this group is the driver who's jumped in this Eikenberry number 25, Kerry Madsen, on the throttle out of turn number four out of St. Mary's, New South Wales, Australia. The Dirty Air, Ike's performance. Haas Hollage entry, finished second on Sunday at the RPM Speedway. Led a lot of that race until the closing laps when Corey Day snuck by him, but great return for the Madman and great to have him back with us tonight here at Red Dirt. I am excited for single car qualifying already. Guys up on the top of the racetrack down there in turn number one and two. Brett Marks at 12.494. Brady Bacon second quick right now at 12.645. So looking at it right now, Dylan, I think that track record for Aaron Reitzel might be safe. We were a little bit worried about it in the first session, but after that, uh, it's definitely fallen off the pace a little bit here. Everybody kind of hovering right around those times from the second group as Marks paces the way here at a 12.419, and that should do it for hot lap group number three. Brent Marks fastest there, 12.419. Brenham Crouch second quickest at a 12.503. Brady Bacon was third at a 12.635. Rico Abreu fourth, Cole Macedo, Ryder LaPlante, and Kerry Madsen rounding out the field. Tony. You guys were talking about it. Kind of a unique setup here. Feels a little bit like Talladega, Dylan, don't you feel, with the flag stand way down there by turn number one. But, folks, this stripe right here where the cone is and over on the uh, fan side of the fence, there's a little tiny checkered flag dug into the ground. This is where the start-finish line really is, and this is most importantly, this is where the timing loop is underneath the track here. They've got the timing loop that the electronic transponders that are on the car, when they pass over this line dug underneath the track, that's what starts and stops the clock when it gets into Capital Custom Trailers qualifying. They'll cross right here, but they don't see the flags down until they get to Lisa right there down by turn number one. So a little unique part of the Red Dirt Raceway here in Meeker. Tony, i got to be honest. I was wondering where you were going with the Talladega comparison, but you are right, and it is Talladega weekend this weekend, of course, for NASCAR. So uh, those boys will have a lot of fun down there on the boulevard, I'm sure. I actually had to replace a timing loop one time uh, at a dirt track. I had to get the tractor out, dig up the ground, and had to replace the timing beam. That was not very fun as we got the next set of cars rolling onto the racetrack. Led out by the driver of Fresno, California. The Red Rose Transportation, Selzy Enterprises, Redline Oil, Whipple Industries, number 41 of Dominic Selzy. Saw Dominic Selzy in the 41. Saw the 42 car rolling by there on flow. He's entering turn number three now. That's Apollo, Pennsylvania's Cy Lynch, and the Mositis Motorsports, Ducati of Pittsburgh, Diesel Property Management, number 42. Also on the Speedway, the most recent winner with Kubota High Limit Racing at RPM Speedway on Sunday night. Tonight, driving the 14 BC out of Clovis, California. The Driven to Save Lives, Sander Engineering, Four Seas Construction, Autry Plumbing, SynCal Entry of Corey Day. Corey Eliason is in the Ridge and Sons Racing number eight. He calls Visalia, California home. That's the Commercial Edge NDT New Direction Transport Entry. Also on the Speedway out of Hanover, Pennsylvania, the Pell's Tire Service, RF Knox Company, the Auto Barn, Weinbrenner Motor Service, Lawrence's Body Shop 1A, it's Jacob Allen. Good to have Hunter Schoenberg back in the field with us. He's working into turn three and four right now. The Josh Ford Motorsports number 73. That's the inland rigging Woodland Auto Display Machine. And final car in this session out of Jacksonville, Oregon. That's the Boss Super Source, Shane DeWall Trucking, S-Tech USA, Carbon Works, Canopy Country 18T of Tanner Holmes. Underway here, Jacob Allen faster than the drivers in that last session, the 1A at 12.399. Jacob making his Red Dirt Raceway debut. Now Corey Day surpasses him, also in his debut at this racetrack at 12.171.
as the checkered flag flies and Corey Day will be the best there in that I believe that was the fourth practice session of the night 12.171 Hunter Schoenberg at 12.277 Jacob Allen 12.399 Cy Lynch fourth at 12.636 and Corey Elias in 12.874 the top five so far. Race fans, Dirt Draft, it'll be the presenting sponsor of Hot Laps for every Highlander Racing event in 2024. The Dirt Draft app allows you to play against hundreds of dirt racing fans across the country. Simply select five drivers each night while staying under a $100,000 salary cap and accumulate points in the process. Use those points in the speed shop to buy all kinds of things. Download the Dirt Draft app today or visit dirtdraft.com for more information. Rolling right along here into our next group of Hot Laps. Yellow car here lined up on the outside facing us here in turn Number four is Blake Hahn out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma. The Smiley's Racing Products CSR Garage Outlaw Wings number 52 for the two-time ASCS champion. From Minden, Nevada, now living in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, the Smith Titanium Factory Kane, Maximal Race Oils, Messina Valley Transportation, Hall of Vodka, Rod Gross Motorsports number 88. That's Tanner Thorson. On the front straightaway in the Napa Auto Parts, Brumos Collection, Maximum Race Oils, number 49. That's the big cat, Brad Sweet, five-time World of Outlaw champion, second in high limit points, tonight or coming into tonight from Monrovia, Indiana, the Avanti windows and doors, big spring car wash, water treatment by design, coastal race parts.com. Number 13. It's Justin Peck behind Justin working down the back straightaway. The 16 TH from Farmersburg, Indiana. That's Kevin Newton, the honest Dave roofing metal supply depot machine. And making his debut inside the high limit room, rolling into turn number three now. Out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma, the same day auto repair tire pros, SDAR trucking number $9. That's Kyle Clark. Kyle Clark in the $9. Cap Henry, the last car in this group. He's working into three and four right now. The Republic Ohio pilot driving Mark Daly's 2MD. That's the Blue Emu, Bikini Zone Shave Gel, Emily Oil Machine. Cap a winner at Attica just a couple of weeks ago. Actually, this past weekend, I should say. Yeah, Cap had an, a rough opening weekend at Attica. Got upside down the first race, but then bounced back, got the victory here last Friday night. So Cap going to be fun to watch throughout this midweek money series. Driving that Mark Daly Racing at 2MD. As we look at the lap time so far in this one, Justin Peck, now Tanner Thorson, fastest at 12.444. Thorson, a winner here at the Red Dirt Race with the USAC Midgets a couple years ago. There is the checkered, and Thorson will remain the fastest in car number 88. 1, 2, 4, 4, 4 was the lap time. Justin Peck second at 12.529. Brad Sweet, 12.535. Cap Henry fourth at 12.549. And Blake Hahn in 52 at 12.863 seconds. Next up will be Capital Custom Trailers qualifying. Capital Renegade Custom Trailers and Coaches, the number one Renegade Toter Home dealer and the number one Intech Trailer dealer. No one sells more Toter Homes or Intech Trailers than Capital Renegade Custom Trailers and Coaches. If you're in the market for a Toter Home or a trailer, trust the people that are there in the pits with you and support the sport. Check out their complete lineup at www.capitalrenegade.com. Dot com. Qualifying coming up next. We've already talked about the track record a few times, Dylan, but just for good measure, it's an 11.427 set by Aaron Reitzel, June 5th of 2020. And as of this point in time, I do not think that we need to worry about saying new track record here tonight as uh, this track is really blown off. But hey, that's what we need. That's what we needed to slow down a little bit, get these guys racing side by side. And uh, if we can get them side by side and they can pass us in the heat races, we are going to be one in for one heck of a show here all night long well and it's it's not as fast as it was obviously that first group of hot laps but it has kind of built up a ledge already through three and four which is uh, exciting to see and should make qualifying entertaining this place kind of chase i don't know if you have you been to putnamville back in indiana this place kind of it kind of reminds me of that a little bit just with the shape of it a little bit and and uh the way it builds up a ledge like that putnamville's famous for the the big curbs and uh, we haven't quite gotten to that point yet but it looks like we could with a with some nice fluff over there in three and four and uh no wall over in one and two either Kind of, kind of reminds me of that place, and qualifying there is always fun. So, no, we're going to be in for a fun qualifying session here as well. A lot of Indiana track references so far in this flow. Yeah, we got, we got Bloomington, Putnamville, and Lawrence.
Lawrence Bird for the bus. That's right. We did. Yes. So we're, we're, we're three for like seven of the Sprint Week shows. Yes. Here. If you've ever been to Lawrenceburg, you know about the buses back in the pit area over there. They got about 42 of them, and they all got different paint schemes on them. So, yeah, very close to getting underway here with Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches qualifying. We'll do one car at a time. We were going to do two, but now we're going to switch it back to one, and that's the way I like it. I love watching just one guy at a time trying to go all out and get that good lap time. You can see him, Dylan, way up the hill back there where the cars are staging so that they can get them uh, underway and get the push truck so it can actually pull back into the parody and circle back around. But look at him way back there, and here comes the first car right now. And how about this? The first car coming out is uh, a driver that has a lot of experience here at the Red Dirt Raceway, was a winner in March here at this racetrack. It is Tanner Kahn making his high level racing debut here tonight out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, the Kramer Farm, Seabass Racing, Hot Rod Reels, Kinley's Custom Creations, Chasm Safety Products, number 78 car. Tanner Kahn tonight utilizing a 360 engine under the hood. Lap number one for Tanner Kahn is going to be a 13 1345 45 Tanner Kahn, five times a winner between 305s and two-barrel sprint cars here at Red Dirt Raceway. Lap number two is better. It's a 12.958-12958. Rolling right along. Next car onto the speedway is the racer out of Kokomo, Indiana. The Chalk Sticks, Torsion Bars, Townline Variety, Indy Race Parts. Number 9P, here's Parker Price Miller. Tenth and high limit points. Best for him this year, a fourth at the Golden Isle Speedway. Lap number one for PPM is fastest of the two qualifiers thus far, 12.534. To work his way down the back stretch and into turn three and four. And then all the way down the front straightaway here towards turn number one. Better on lap two, 12.381. So nice lap for Parker Price Miller. He's fastest the first two so far. Parker Price Miller missing the track exit off of turn number two. So going to impede the progress here of our next driver that comes to us out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The sick guard engine oil, Hample Oil, Mystic Lubricants, Western Flyer Express, Deathridge Optical number 5T. The driver is Ryan Timms. Ryan Timms in 5T. And Timms will pace around nice and slow until he gets over to turn number three. We do not want him to have any kind of advantage of getting more momentum than the rest of his competitors here as he comes to the green flag right here. So Tim's now on the clock. A winner here at the Red Dirt Raceway back in 2022 with the USAC Mitches. He's also a two-time winner here in a restricted micro sprint. Lap number one for Ryan Timms is going to be second quick at a 12.707. Little mistake in turn number one. 12.707 for Ryan Timms. He was 11th with Kubota Highland Racing at RPM Speedway on Sunday night. Lap number two for Ryan Timms is going to be slower. It's a 12.963. He'll take the first one at 12.707. And one thing that is good about single car qualifying, you can just hear these guys hammering it all the way around here. Love that for sure. Here's Jason Martin. He was scheduled to be our first qualifier. He'll go out fourth in the order now. Racer out of Liberal, Kansas, the Bybee Electric Trucks Plus, Mel Hamilton Racing, number 36 for the ASCS champ. Sixth and seventh in the B mains at Texas in the RPM Speedway this past weekend. First lap for Jason Martin, fourth of the four qualifiers, 13.085. He'll work down the back straightaway. And in a three and pulls it off the cushion through four across the start finish line. Lap number two is better, but still fourth, 12.969 for Jason Martin. Next driver rolling onto the racetrack now is out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is the Puro Clean Realty Connect Eclipse Claims Consulting, number 29 of Emilio Hoover. Hoover on the gas down the back straightaway in his High Limit Racing debut here tonight. Coming across the line on lap number one, and Emilio is going to go fifth quick at a 13.244. 13.244 has recently made the jump here to the wing sprint car. Ran a lot with the power eye midges here over the last couple of years, and lap number two is better at 13.104 for the 29 of Emilio Hoover. Next driver rolling down the hill and onto the speedway is last year's High Limit Sprint Car Series Titleist. We'll take the green flag this time by out of Elk Grove, California, the Paul Silva Flow Racing, Finley Farms, HendrickCars.com, number 57, it's Young Money, Kyle Larson. 
winner this year at East Bay with the Highland Sprint Car Series, also a winner in the late model back of the Wild West shootout. Lap number one for Kyle Larson, second quick, 12, 530, 1, 2, 530 for Larson. Won the pole for the NASCAR Cup Series the last three weeks. See what he can do here. Lap two, it's better in quick time. 12-3-53. Kyle Larson fastest of the six cars that have qualified here in Group A. Next car to the racetrack. He is the current points leader with Kubota Highlander Racing out of Indianapolis, Indiana. The NOS Energy Drink, Elliott's Custom Trailers and Carts, number 7 BC. Here's Sunshine Tyler Courtney. Tyler Courtney in car number 7 BC. Coming across the line for lap number one, he is going to go fourth quick at 12.882, 12.882. Courtney never been here with the wing on top of the race car, has a couple of USAC midget starts. He was second here in 2020. Lap number two is second quick at a 12, 373, 12.373 for Tyler Courtney in 7 BC. Just a couple hundred separating your top two, so awfully close near the top. See what this guy can do. He's at Alice Springs, Northern Territory, Australia. The Roth Enterprises, TRD, HR Livestock Transportation, number 83. Here's James McFadden. Great to have J-Mac with us here in the States. Lap number one is fourth quick, 12-443, 1-2-443. Best finish for him this year in four starts as a fourth at the US 36 Raceway. Rolled the bottom here on lap number two, and it didn't quite pay off for him. Slowed down to a 12.565. He'll take the first one fourth quick, 12.443. Another driver making his Highlander Racing debut here tonight. Out of Overland Park, Kansas, the J.B. Henderson Construction, BC Valley Transportation, Smith Titanium, Miller Bonded, Giacomo's Vineyard, number 45X of Jace Park. Jace Park in 45X. Lap number one for Jace Park will be ninth quick at a 13.386 for the Johnny Herrera Racing number 45 X car. Park in the past was seventh in a winged A-class micro here back in 2021. Second time by the line is going to be better. It's up to eighth quick at 12.978 for Jace Park in 45 X. And he missed the turnoff there over in turn two, but Wyndham got out in front of him, so he should be good here. Here is the green flag for Keaton, Illinois' Chris Wyndham in the Vermeer Motorsports, NOS Energy Drink, Logan Contractor Supply, TK Concrete, number 55, the USAC Triple Crown champion, who we've seen on the wing side the last couple of years. White flag, first lap for Wyndham, is sixth quick, 12-810, 12810. His best high limit finish this year is a seventh back at East Bay. And here's the checkered flag, lap number two. Better fourth quick for Big Daddy, 12-407. Chris Windham goes P4. Rolling track side now out of Enumclaw, Washington. It's the Casey Kane race with Mike Kerr, Rumo's collection, factory Kane shocks, Kane screen print number nine. Here's Casey Kane. Casey Kane in car number nine. Kane here in his Red Dirt Raceway debut. Lap number one is going to be six quick at 12.633. One, two, six, three, three for Casey Kane on lap number one. Was 22nd at RPM Speedway on Sunday night after a couple of incidents in the feature event. Lap number two is to the top. 12, 349. One, two, three, four, nine to the top for Casey Kane. How about that? Nice rebound for Casey. Our next driver was our winner at the Texas Motor Speedway this past weekend. Calls Dillsburg, Pennsylvania home. It's the CD rigging JS Classics Valley Supply, number 39M, Anthony Macri. Three other wins this year for Macri, all in Pennsylvania. Lap number one for the 39M is sixth quick, 12 429, 12 429 for Anthony Macri. Those three Pennsylvania wins, of course, in addition to his win at Texas with the High Limit Sprint Car Series, as we said. Lap number two, better, fifth quick, 12 407. 12407 P5 for Macri. Next driver onto the racetrack out of Angola, Indiana, the Sun Dollar Restoration for Performance. Sage Fruit Reach Reading Foundation, Hager Realty, number 26. Here's Zeb Wise. Zeb Wise in car number 26. Zeb way up in the fluff right there in one and two or in three and four. And he goes to the top. 12, 3, 2, 5. 1, 2, 3, 2, 5. The right rear was hanging out with the cabbage patch kids up there, and it pays off. Lap number two for Zeb Wise. It is going to be just slightly slower at 12.367. Lap one to the top. 12, 325. Zeb's got the forward rolling good. 
new quick time and Mark DeBeat 12 325. Here's Spencer Baston from Lebanon, Indiana, the True Timber Cambo, JRC Transportation, high performance lubricants entry. Top tens in five of the six high limit races this year. Lap number one for Spencer Baston, ninth quick, 12 549, 1 2 5 4 9. Based on a winner at the Chili Bowl this year in preliminary action. Out of four, checkered flag on his qualifying attempt. It's better, but ninth quick still. 12-4-97, ninth fastest for Spencer Baston. One of our full-time high rollers rolls onto the racetrack now at a Lubbock, Texas, the High Plains Building Division, Carbon Safety Technologies, Lubbock Wrecker, Five Nights Truck Accessories, ShopTruckParts.com. Number one, here's Brenham Crouch. Brenham Crouch in car number one. Lap one for Brenham Crouch is going to be 10th quick at a 12.696, 12.696. Crouch, fourth with the USAC Midgets here back in 2022. Was 12th at both RPM and at Texas Motor Speedway's dirt track last weekend. He's going to go slower on lap two. It's got a 12.730 first lap better at 12.696. 12.325 by Zeb Wise, still the mark to beat. And here's somebody that is always entertaining. Aboard the Eikenberry 25, the Dirty Air Ike's performance, Haas Haulage, number 25, out of St. Mary's, New South Wales, Australia. Here's the madman, Kerry Madsen. Second at RPM on Sunday. Lap number one for Madsen, 10th quickest, 12-6-6-0. 1-2-6-6-0. There's four starts for him this year. For Knoxville Raceway, track champion, up and over the curb through three and four. And it cost him a little bit on his second lap. Goes slower, 12.843. Tenth on the first lap, 12.660. The final driver in Flight A qualifying onto the racetrack now at a Calera, Oklahoma. Here's the Oklahoma Truck Driving Academy, LS Construction and Roofing, High Plains Building Division, Victory Fuel, Donnie Ray Crawford, Legacy Foundation, 88R. It's Ryder LaPlante. Ryder LaPlante in 88R. Lap one is 16th quick at 13.010. 13.010. LaPlante, a two time restricted micro winner here at the Red Dirt. Raceway. Lap number two for LaPlante. He jumps up to 13th quick at a 12.863. 12.863 for Ryder LaPlante. So that's it for Flight A qualifying. Your fastest driver, the 26 of Zeb Wise. And we're rolling right into Flight B right now. First car to take time for this Flight B is the racer out of Myerstown, Pennsylvania, the m and Painting and Construction, Baps Paints, McGrewbid.com. Number 19, here's Brent Marks. Two wins for him this year. Cotton Bowl with the Outlaws and the Texas Dirt Track last weekend with the Power Eye Boss Series. Lap one for Marks is a 12.508. 12.508, so a couple tenths off of fastest in Group A. Up and over the cushion just slightly through three and four. Lap two is better, 12.347. 12-3-4-7, that's the mark that everybody else is going to chase here in Flight B, set by Brent Marks. On the racetrack now, in a broken arrow, Oklahoma, the Dahmer powertrain, Townstar Technologies, Fatheads Eyewear, Maximal Oil, Hobson Family, number 21H, it's the Macho Man, Brady Bacon. Brady Bacon in 21H, this looks pretty good. Oh, gets a little tight there off of four. 12.462, even with that mistake, not a bad lap there for Brady Bacon. He runs the bottom down there in one and two, and is going to rip the lip back, that, back down here in turns three and four. Lap number two for Brady is going to be a little bit slower to 12.511. Had it spooled up over there at the exit of turn number two. Got to try something. And we know this guy will. He's out of St. Helena, California. The Rico Abreu Curabag, Ajanian Racing, Arc Zone, Mesilla Valley Transportation, Wise Agency, number 24. It's Rico Abreu. Rico just ninth in high limit points coming into tonight. Lap number one, third of the three cars qualified so far in Group B, 12.590. Rico does have a win with the Outlaws at the 81 Speedway, where the high limit cars will go in a couple weeks. Lap two for Rico is better, but second quick, 12.354, 12.354 for Rico. Rolling to the green flag out of Sykeston, Missouri, the Inland Rigging Woodland Auto Display. Marshan Cattle Company, Surecan LLC, MP Environmental number 73. Here's 100%, Hunter Schoenberg. Hunter Schoenberg in car number 73. Lap one for 100%, 12.697, 12697. That is fourth quick so far of the four drivers. 
Schoenberg tonight making his Red Dirt Raceway debut. He was 24th at RPM Speedway on Sunday night. Lap number two is better, still fourth quick at 12.668 for the Josh Ford Motorsports 73. Good to have Hunter back with us after a tough go in Texas. Cy Lynch, the next qualifier, he calls Apollo, Pennsylvania home. The Mesitis Motorsports, Ducati of Pittsburgh, diesel property management, number 42. The 13th at the RPM Speedway on Sunday. Lap number one for Cy Lynch is fifth fastest, 12.812. 12.812. Best finish for him this year in everything he's raced, a third in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with the Fast on Dirt series. Lap two for Cy Lynch, better, but still fifth fastest, 12.796. Rolling onto the racetrack, now currently fifth among full-time drivers in high-limit racing point standings. He's at a Hanover, Pennsylvania, the Pals Tire Service, RF Knox Company, the Auto Barn, Weinbrenner Motor Service, Lawrence's Body Shop, number 1A. Here's Jacob Allen. Jacob Allen in car number 1A. Jacob way up next to the wall in turns three and four. Lap number one is going to be six quick at a 12.867. One, two, six, eight, seven. Red Dirt Raceway debut tonight for Jacob Allen. As we mentioned, fifth in points, was third at the RPM Speedway and fourth at the dirt track at Texas. Lap number two is better, jumps into the top five at 12.712. Fifth quick for Jacob Allen. Next car rolling onto the Speedway is the Ridge and Sons Racing Commercial Edge, NDT New Direction Transport. BNL Holdings number eight out of Visalia, California. Here's Corey Eliason. One of the drivers up in the mix for that win at the All-Star Race here back in 2020 that we've talked so much about tonight. Corey finished third four years ago. He goes fourth quickest on his first lap here in qualifying, 12.665. A winner this year at the BAP Speedway in Pennsylvania on March the 24th. And here's the checkered flag, lap number two for Eliason. Just a little slower, 12.699. He'll take the first lap, 12.665. Good enough for fourth for Eliason. He is the most recent winner with Kubota High Limit Racing, hitting the track now out of Clovis, California. Tonight, driving the driven to, driven to Save Lives, Sander Engineering, Four Seas Construction, Autry Plumbing, Sincal, number 14, BC. Here's Corey Day. Corey Day in the 14, BC. Lap number one is fourth quick at 12.548. One, two, five, four, eight. Currently fourth in high level racing point standings. Got the win at RPM Speedway on Sunday night. Lap number two is going to be a little bit slower at 12.752. First lap better at 12.548. That's fourth quick for Corey Day. Rolling right along. Here's our next qualifier. Ninth car out onto the speedway here in Group B. From Jacksonville, Oregon, the Boss Superstore, Shane DeWalt Trucking, Canopy Country, 18T. This is Tanner Holmes. Four-time winner last year in Wing 360 competition. Saw him in the Shark Racing car several times last year in 410 competition as well. Lap number one for Tanner Holmes is ninth of the nine qualifiers, 13-217. 13-217, got up and over the cushion in the middle of three and four, had to lift, and it'll cost him some time. He actually does pick it up, 13-139, but still ninth fastest for Tanner Holmes. Rolling on to the Speedway now to Fresno, California. The Red Rose Transportation Selsey Enterprises. Redline Oil Whipple Industries number 41. It's Dominic Selsey. Dominic Selsey in car number 41. Dominic Selsey was here at that All-Star Race back in 2020. He finished up 15th in that main event. Lap number one for Selsey is going to be ninth quick at 12.896. One, two, eight, nine, six for the former NARC champion out on the West Coast. Coming around turns three and four for lap number two. It's going to be better up to eighth quick at 12.748 for the 41 of Dominic Selzy. Everybody's still chasing Brent Marks here in group B, 12.347. Nobody's really been close to it the last few cars out. Sepulpa, Oklahoma is Blake Hahn is up next. This is the Smiley's Racing Product CSR Garage Outlaw Wings number 52. Blake, a winner with Power Eye Midgets at the Creek County Speedway here in Oklahoma. Lap number one at Red Dirt in qualifying, 12-9-16, 10th fastest for Blake Hahn. Two-time ASCS champion. His best sprint car finish this year is a second at the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track a couple weeks ago. Lap number two slows down, 12-9-97. First lap, a 12-9-16. That'll put Blake Hahn 10th right now. Rolling track side now, the five-time World of Outlaws champion at Grass Valley, California, the Casey Kane race with Mike Kerb, Napa Auto Parts, Brumos Collection, Maximo Race Wheels number 49. It's the big cat, Brad Sweet. Brad Sweet in car number 49. 
Sweet is ready to race with debut. Lap number one is to the top. 12, 3, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 3, 4. Looking for three quick times in a row with Kubota High Limit Racing just barely off the lap time as Zeb Wise. And it's a little bit slower on lap two at 12.442. The first one is to the top in flight B, 12.334. So still some speed left and plenty of good cars left to go to challenge the big cat, including this racer out of Monrovia, Indiana in the Avanti windows and doors, coastalracesparts.com, big spring car wash number 13. This is Justin Peck, winner last year with the High Limit Sprint Car Series at Kokomo. Busy this year already, 14 races between Florida, Pennsylvania, and the high limit schedule. First lap is sixth quick, 12.655. 12.655 for Justin Peck. Best finish for him this year, and all those starts is a third. He's done that three times. Lap two for Peck is slower, 12.775. First lap fast enough for sixth quickest, 12.655. A former USAC midget winner here at Red Dirt Raceway hits the track now. At a minute to Nevada now, living in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, the Smith Titanium Factory King, Maximal Raceway, Mesilla Valley Transportation, Hall of Vodka, Rod Gross, Motor Sports, 88. It's Tanner Thorson. Tanner Thorson in car number 88. Lap one for Thorson is good enough for six quick at 12.623, one, two, six, two, three. That USAC win coming here back in 2020 as Thorson bangs it off the wall in turn number four. Lap number two is going to be a little bit slower, 12.748. First lap slightly better at 12.623. Just a couple more cars remaining in Capital Renegade, Capital Trailers and Coaches qualifying. Here's Kyle Clark in the 9S, Sepulpa, Oklahoma race for the same day auto repair, Tire Pros, SDAR trucking machine. Work his way out of turn number four. Lap number one is 15th at a 13.203. Kyle's a past winner here with the Oil Capital Racing Series. Smoothly through three and out of four, he will stop the clocks on his second lap at a 13-319. He'll take the first one. 13-203 for Kyle Clark. One of our full-time midweek competitors now hits the racetrack out of Bellevue, Ohio. It's the Blue Emu, Bikini Zone, Shave Gel, Emily Motor Oil, Tub of Towels, Ohio Logistics, Ohio Logistics, 2MD. It's Cap Henry. Cap Henry in the 2MD. Lap number one for Cap Henry is going to be 14th quick at a 13.084. Tonight, Cap Henry is the driver of the night as far as the playlist goes. The songs you will be hearing here on Flow Racing, courtesy of Cap Henry, one of our full-time midweek competitors. Lap two is better up to 12th quick for the 2MD at 12.769 for Cap Henry. Final qualifier onto the speedway, and he'll look at the green flag. This time by, out of Farmersburg, Indiana, the Honest Abe Roofing. Metal Supply Depot, the 16 TH is scooting Kevin Newton. 18th, his best result this year. Came at the Cotton Bowl Speedway with the World of Outlaws. Lap number one for Kevin Newton is 17th, 13.703. Former Neymar's Midget Champion back in 1999, just his second year in 4 410 competition. Lap number two is better. Still 17th, 13.671, the official time for Kevin Newton. And that's it for Flight B qualifying. Fastest in Flight B at 12.334. It's Brad Sweet, but your fastest driver overall here tonight at 12.325. How about a round of applause for Zeb Wise? Race fans, have you already signed up as an organ donor with Driven to Save Lives? If so, you can do even more to help save lives by becoming an official Driven to Save Lives ambassador. As a, as a Driven to Save Lives ambassador, you will get exclusive access to swag, behind-the-scenes information about drivers and teams, and even invitations to, to, to special events. But most importantly, you can help share the life-saving message of being an organ donor. Becoming an ambassador is easy. Just visit driven to save lives.org and clip on click on the ambassador tab you have the power to save lives qualifying and hot laps are in the books next on the racing program is heat races following opening ceremonies which will be coming up here momentarily at red dirt raceway here for the routine development in conjunction with the race routine foundation red dirt rumble presented by bob hurley rv here at red dirt raceway if you're watching home on flow race we'll take a quick break and come back here for opening ceremonies
it comes to Magneto Ignition Performance, there's only one name that you can trust, and that's BR Motorsports Ignitioneering. Servicing the racing industry for over 30 years, our state-of-the-art Magneto Dyno Test Lab facility is equipped with the most technically advanced equipment available. And that's why crew chiefs like Paul Silva and Philip Dietz choose BR for all their ignition needs. To learn more, visit us at brpromag.com. Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. We are the number one Renegade Toter Home dealer and the number one Intech and Bravo Sprint Car Trailer dealer. No one sells more Toter Homes and Sprint Car Trailers than we do. Check out our complete lineup at CapitalRenegade.com. If you're in the market for a Toter Home or a trailer, trust the people that are in the pits with you and that support the sport. Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day, sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find your nearest dealer at KubotaOrangedays.com. And we are back here at the Red Dirt Raceway in Meeker, Oklahoma for the Red Dirt Rumble. Tonight, it's the Redeem Development in conjunction with the Race Redeem Foundation Red Dirt Rumble presented by Bob Hurley RV. We've got qualifying and hot laps in the books. Next up will be heat races, four of them for Kubota Highlander Racing as uh, the track crew is making last minute adjustments to the surface right now. And if you're here at the racetrack, you are able to go visit that Kubota Highlander Racing official merchandise trailer. But if you're not here at the racetrack, well, we've got this really fancy QR code for you here on Flow. And I, I explained earlier how to use QR codes. Hopefully uh, you learned something here today on this broadcast. But you scan that QR code right there. It takes you, takes you right to our website where you can order all kinds of different merchandise, hats, sweatshirts, t-shirts, and things of that nature. Well, Dylan, exciting qualifying. I know, like, we didn't break the track record or anything like that, but I just love single car qualifying. You could, like you said earlier, you can hear them on the throttle, and especially at a place like this where they were up next to the wall in uh, three and four. That was exciting. I think it's always awesome at these, these tracks, like you said, that do have a wall when the sound just echoes the, the coming out the right side header sound just echoes off that wall and uh it's it's such a great sound such a cool sound we don't we don't it seems like have a ton of tracks that have walls uh walls all the way around them anymore so it's it's cool and we get at least half the racetrack where you can kind of hear that sound of those guys just burying and burying the throttle all the way around the corner so a lot of fun always always enjoy single car qualifying and race fans at this time will take a couple moments to thank some of the partners that allow Kubota High Limit Racing to be what it is. Musco Lighting is proud to be an official partner of High Limit Racing. As the world's leader in sports lighting, Musco's advanced solutions are featured everywhere, from local tracks to the biggest NASCAR and Formula One circuits around the globe. On behalf of the entire Musco team, we hope you enjoy tonight's event. Racing Electronics is the number one company in race communications and the official race communications provider for High Limit. Racing Electronics has over 30 years of experience and serves every major form of auto racing. And the exclusive Racing Electronics Race Receiver Pro is the micro receiver of choice for the top High Limit drivers. Learn more by calling RE today at 800-272-7111 or visit them at racingelectronics.com. Jake's Golf Carts, America's home for custom carts, has been supporting dirt track racing for over 25 years and is proud to be a sponsor of High Limit Racing. Jake's Golf Carts offer racing discounts to all race teams and race fans with nationwide shipping available. Give Jake's Golf Carts a call at 717-899-6699 and check them out online at www.jakesgolfcarts.com. Make sure you tell them High Limit Racing sent you for a special racing discount. 
Texas-based band Whiskey Myers seamlessly fuses gritty blues, rock, and Americana, creating an authentic and original sound. From humble beginnings playing at local hockey tonks to headlining major festivals and topping the charts, Whiskey Myers' journey is a testament to the enduring spirit of Southern music. While one driver will visit Whiskey Myers' Victory Lane tonight, you should visit their website for tour dates, tickets, and merchandise at whiskeymyers.com. K1 Race Gear is proud to be the official safety gear provider of High Limit Racing. More top-level drivers across all forms of motorsport trust K1 Race Gear with their safety product needs. Whether it's premium custom suits, gloves, or shoes, K1 Race Gear has you covered. Find out more at www.k1racegear.com and follow us along at K1 Race Gear on all social media platforms. K1 Race Gear, the racer's brand of safety gear and apparel. As seen on ABC's Shark Tank, the Frozen Farmer ice cream and sorbet flavors are made with imperfect fruits, connecting us all in the fight against food waste. Rooted on a third-generation family farm, the Frozen Farmer's premium line of flavors can be found nationwide in more than 5,000 locations. To find a retail location near you, visit www.thefrozenfarmer.com. HendrickCars.com is the only site that can handle all of your vehicle needs right from the racetrack. We make it easy to shop, buy, and service the way you want. With more than 100 locations, 25 brands, and everything from luxury vehicles to work trucks in our nationwide inventory, Hendrick has it. Schedule a service appointment with one of our certified master technicians, find a collision center, and even browse hundreds of career openings all on HendrickCars.com. The Butler Bill Professional Seat Systems Hot Seat Question will take place during tonight's Dash Draw. Fans can submit their own questions to ask drivers to this email address, butlerbuilthotseat at highlimitracing.com, and have a chance to win a High Limit Racing prize pack. Butler Bill Professional Seat System, when safety matters. Kometic Gasket is a proud sponsor of High Limit Racing. Kometic is the go-to high-performance gasket for racers around the globe. Kometic is dedicated to customer satisfaction and provides uncompromised sealing solutions designed for each customer's specific application. Kometic Gaskets are the industry standard for championship-winning teams across multiple disciplines of both professional and amateur motorsports. Kometic Gaskets are proudly made in the USA. For more information, log on to Kometic.com. Kometic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. Tasty Baked Charcoal Grills, pioneers of the original backyard barbecue. Made in the USA since 1948, these grills let you sear, grill, bake, and smoke all in one. With its durable construction lasting generations and innovative design, Tasty Baked delivers delicious results every time. From juicy steaks to tender ribs, you have the power to unleash culinary creativity with Tasty Baked. Join the tradition of quality, flavor, and American-made excellence. Tasty Baked Charcoal Grills, where quality meets unbeatable flavor. Visit our website at www.hastybake.com to order yours now and use promo code HIGHLIMIT for 10% off your purchase. Race fans, are you ready to experience the ultimate in equipment solutions? Head to your nearest Kubota dealership today and discover a world of top quality products, expert advice, and exceptional service. From tractors to utility vehicles, Kubota offers a wide range of reliable options to meet your needs. Don't wait any longer. Visit a Kubota dealership now and let them help you find the perfect solution for your equipment needs. Race fans, show your support for Shop Rico with exclusive Rico Abreu merchandise. Get 10% off all ShopRico.com gear online with code RACER24. Don't miss out. Rev up your style today. Race fans, we're about seven minutes away from opening ceremonies beginning here at Red Dirt Raceway. We'll get right into heat race action. If you're watching at home on Flow Race, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Got a video to play for you, and they'll be ready to go downstairs to Tony Laporta for opening ceremonies set for 725, so seven minutes away from right now.
This broadcast is brought to you by DMI and BR Motorsports and Comp Cams. Here we are in Meeker, Oklahoma, Red Dirt Raceway for race number one of the Midweek Money Series. We've got uh, 37, or sorry, 35 cars in the pit area that have already taken to the racetrack for hot laps and qualifying here at the Red Dirt Rumble. They are making the final preparations to the racetrack, and it looks like we're about, I've been told now, eight minutes away from opening ceremonies at 730 and for those of you watching home on flow, we got a pretty interesting video here for you to take in. The drivers were asked that are full time with Kubota Highlander Racing. What is something that people do not know about you? And it's a pretty interesting video for those of you here in the stands. You'll be able to hear this. For those of you watching at home, you'll be able to see the drivers answer the question and hear them, obviously. So let's take a look at that video and maybe learn something new about these drivers. Most people don't know I'm a twin. I, um, yeah, I have a twin brother. We're actually born on two separate days. He was born at 11:30 on April 22nd. I was 1:30 a.m. on uh, the 23rd. So, um, yeah, not only am I a twin, but we have two different birthdays. And now I would say, I'd say the last couple of years, more people have started to learn that. <laughs> I'm actually a nice guy when I, when you get to know me. <laughs> so I don't know. And I can be a real head when you when you piss me off. People call me a nerd for it, whatever. Um, I'm really good with computers. Like, I built my own computer for iRacing and me and my buddies play R Factor and iRacing and anytime someone has a computer question, they're always calling me, which does get a little annoying at times, but um, yeah, I just am very, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but tech, I love tech. I think one thing that people don't know about me is, is I mean, I, and I feel like it's starting to get more and more known out there is like I do everything on my race cars whether it's clean the trailer you know mount tires and obviously I have a group behind me more this year than I ever have but um, I bust my ass left and right I can do whether it's racing or cleaning the trailer running the valves anything in between that's that's kind of my MO I can cook I cook about anything really I like making pasta like sauce from scratch I think that's pretty fun. I'd say my favorite is I make a really good shrimp scampi. It's uh, like white wine and butter sauce uh, with some lemon and some herbs in there. That's, that's usually my go-to. Well, I, whoever made that video, number one, is great. But the very end with the Italian music playing at the end, Dylan, that was a nice touch. I was going to say, if... Justin is claiming he can cook pasta. I was going to be like, come on. But he, you know, he claims he can make his the own sauce, sauce from, from scratch. So that is actually pretty impressive. It, it's difficult to do that. So I'll, I'll give him some credit on that one. Yeah, he needs I, to we'll have to have him cook for us one night. Absolutely. Yeah, I, those videos are cool. And, you know, that was only four of the drivers with Kubota High Lima Racing. We've got another 12 more that we are going to be hearing from in videos like that. We've had videos like the Hot Laps 101, Heat Race 101, Qualifying 101. And we're going to hear from all of the drivers. Very cool videos that they're putting together at Flow Racing uh, for the Kubota High Limit Racing Series. So uh, we are close. We've got uh, about four minutes till we head downstairs to hear from Tony Laporta for opening ceremonies here at Red Dirt Raceway in Meeker, Oklahoma. It's the Routine Development in conjunction with the Race Routine Foundation Red Dirt Rumble presented by Bob Hurley RV.
This production is brought to you by TJ Forged. And Winter's Performance. As well as FK Rod Ends. We're back here at the Red Dirt Raceway, getting extremely close to opening ceremonies to kick things off here at the Red Dirt Rumble. Chase Robin next to Dylan Welch up here in the Hasty Bake Announcers booth. Let's take a look, Dylan, at the qualifying efforts from the top three drivers in each flight. Here's Kyle Larson. I think he ended up third overall in qualifying uh, earlier on this afternoon and getting a good look. He went out relatively early, so the track, you could still tell by the end here that the track was much, much different, especially on that end of the speedway uh, in the next three cars that come up here. Yeah, it was interesting just to kind of watch the track develop and change even throughout the course of of just 35 cars on the racetrack. So there were some different approaches that we'll kind of see throughout this session. This one impressed me. Casey Kane, frankly, did not have a good weekend uh, in Texas and, and, and really struggled, but a nice rebound for him here to qualify second in Group A with a really nice lap. Yeah, I think he makes up a lot of time on this end of the racetrack right here. I don't know if it's this lap or the second lap, but one of them in three and four, you could tell that he uh, hit it right and really got a big burst of speed off of turn number four. Let's see if it's this lap right here. He gets way up there in the good stuff, and yeah, that, that was, was it good. right there. <laughs> you could tell that he nailed it right there and went second quick. And here's Zeb Wise, another one who was really smooth all the way around the top side at both ends, the Redeen Racing number 26. That car ran well here in the last 410 sprint car race here back in 2020 with Corey Eliason by the wheel, behind the wheel. Zeb had the right rear up in the cabbage patch, as you called it, Chase, but uh, he got it pointed the right direction, stood in the throttle, and that Ford Performance engine pulled him out of trouble and helped him lay down a nice lap. Yep, he was uh, extremely good there in qualifying. Now the Flight B drivers, the top three in Flight B. Here's Rico Abreu's two laps. The Mesee Valley Transportation number 24 had a tough night at RPM Speedway, trying to bounce back here tonight in his Red Dirt Raceway debut. And you'll see here for Rico, the track, uh, the groove down here has moved up uh, quite a bit by the time he came out onto the racetrack and got through three and four pretty well right there. And I think we're going to see a couple of guys tonight, Dylan, that they're going to be blowing it off the racetrack down there one and two with one little mistake. And it's interesting just watching this back, the guys that just watching the front wheels, the, the cars that have their wheels straight, they just kind of glided up to the curb through three and four. That seems to be the approach that worked. There were some guys that were kind of just sliding up to it in a power slide. Some drivers kind of entered up in the fluff and tried to get the car pointed down the hill. But if you can just glide your race car up to it right there in the center, it seemed like it was working a little bit better. Worked well for Brent Marks. He was second in Group B. It also worked really well for the next guy we're going to look at here, that being uh, Brad Sweet, who had a heck of a lap laid down as Marks comes through three and four. This is the second time by the line. And uh, pretty smooth there for the McGrewBid.com at number 19. And here's Brad Sweet. And you know, just kind of remembering it right now, I, I feel like I remembered hearing him never lift in turns three and four. Uh, the Napa 49 was looking pretty good. I feel like he almost dropped it off the edge right there in turn number two. Uh, but Brad Sweet uh, definitely not scared of the concrete wall down there in turns three and four. And Sweet, that is his, I think he's been quick time the last two races. He wasn't overall quick time here tonight, but quickest in flight B. He came off of turn number four and set down two pretty darn good laps. And with that, I believe we are now ready to go downstairs here at the Red Dirt Raceway and sending it down there with Tony Laporta. Thanks a bunch, Chase. It is just a beautiful night here in Meeker, Oklahoma. How else would you rather be spending a Tuesday night than kicking things off here with the Midweek Money Series and Kubota High Limit Racing? It's always really cool to get to talk to this guy right here, Tim Kloss. And Tim, I'm going to get a little bit of that red dirt off your hat for you there. You're always looking good. Hey. This is a uh, series that you guys have been a part of for a long time. We just had Corey Day on our Fan Fest stage, and you know I kind of had to reckon with the fact that Driven to Save Lives isn't just a part of Kubota High Limit Racing. They're a part of sprint car racing and dirt track racing as a whole. Tell me about Driven to Save Lives and how your family is connected to it. Obviously, a very unique connection and, and the mission you guys strive to accomplish every year. Yeah, no, uh, Driven to Save Lives is a uh, campaign from the Indiana Donor Network that uh, is, was built to raise awareness about organ and tissue donation. Uh, when we lost Brian in August of 2016, uh, we didn't know he was an organ donor. Um, fortunately, we found his license and it had the red heart on it. And that uh, really changed our, you know, kind of changed our world in that moment. Um, since then, uh, the Driven to Cam, Driven to Save campaign has just grown to what uh, to what we see now. Uh, we're 
probably in the 10,000 range of uh, uh, people who have signed up to be a donor through uh, www.driventosavelives.org, uh, which is a national registry, a little bit different than your state registry. Now, you talked on the websites, and I want to get back to that in a moment so people can learn a lot more from those places of information and how they can become involved. Corey and I talked about it on the FanFest stage. But again, referencing Corey Day, he's got that 14 on his wing that he races with the Kubota High Limit Racing season all year long. But these days, he's got that BC on the back number of it right there, on the back side of that number. How cool is it? Obviously, that BC has been on the back side of Tyler Courtney's number seven, for example, for, for quite a while now. But to see that BC now move to different drivers and different numbers, of course, with your guys' blessing, to me, I think that's really cool. What's that like for you to see Brian's initials on different race cars that belong to really talented drivers? Yeah, no, I mean, for, uh, you know, for a way to memorialize Brian through the racing community, uh, you know, he was... Uh, he's pretty well known with all the racing that he did and uh, we we just want to do something kind of small um, all the cars that we've had over the years are midgets uh, our USAC sprint car uh, now of course Tyler Courtney with the 7 BC um, and now Corey Day with the 14 BC um, it's just uh, something that's that's special to us uh, we know Brian's here watching uh, make sure he's keeping his eye on the right cars that's so cool. Uh, you guys have got the BC39 with the USAC National Midgets. You guys have been involved in a lot of different series and now here with Kubota High Limit Racing. That's how you guys are involved with us. But how can the folks in the grandstands, how can the folks watching home at Flow or watching at home on Flow, how can they become involved with Driven to Save Lives? And most importantly, how can they become a donor? Yeah, I mean, it's really simple. Uh, there's a website, again, www.driven2savelives.org. Um, you go there, you can sign up to be come on the registry for the for the national uh, program. Um, but along with that, if you're already a donor on that, you can become an ambassador. And that's a part of uh, something that we've grown over the last few years where we've had a lot of reach out from the community on how, okay, we're, we're a donor now. Um, you, you know, we know what's going to happen then, but we want to help support it now. So we've got ambassadors now all over the world that go out and promote the organ donation in their community. Tim, it's always great to have you at the track. You guys and that 7BC have been competing so well already. There's your two wins to the team's credit. You've got Corey here with the Midweek Money Series, but you're just an asset to the Sprint Car Racing community. You and your whole family are. Thank you for spending some time with us tonight. Yeah, thank you, and thank you to High Limit. Thank you to all you fans that are out supporting this series. Uh, what they're doing is incredible for the sport, and we're proud to be a part of it. Tim Clausen, thank you for your time. Folks, check out Driven to Save Lives. Again, that's Driven, the number two, Save Lives. Tim Clausen, such a phenomenal ambassador for uh, getting people to join and become donors. At this time, we are now ready to kick off the seventh round of the 2024 Kubota High Limit Racing season and the first round of the Midweek Money Series. So at this time, Red Dirt Raceway, if you are able, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps as we prepare to begin opening ceremonies. I would now like to welcome from Racers for Christ, J J Chaplain Jackson Whitaker, as he leads us in tonight's invocation. Let's pray together. Father God, we come to you this evening so thankful for a beautiful evening to enjoy racing, the sport that we love so much here at Red Dirt Raceway. We ask for your protection on each driver, the crews. We're thankful for the talents that they share with us. We want to thank you again tonight for the gift of your son, the sacrifice that he made that we have eternal life. We ask for your protection on our country, our first responders, those who risk their lives for us. Tonight, again, we ask for your protection. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Fans, we ask at this time you please remain standing as we prepare to honor America. And we welcome from Red Dirt Raceway, Miss Lainey Bogus, as she sings tonight's national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallant 
gently streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh see Spangled banner, yeah, wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. What an awesome job by Laney Bogus. Folks, one more time. How about some noise for that young lady? Folks, it's Tuesday night. It's Red Dirt Raceway. It's the Midweek Money Series, and it's time to go here on Flow Racing with Kubota High Limit Racing. We are ready for heat race action at Red Dirt Raceway. Let's take a look at the lineup for TJ Ford's heat race number one on the pole. The driver out of California, Flow Racing, Finley Farms, HitterCars.com, Focus Brothers Trucking, Glenn Styers Racing, JVI Group 57. It's Kyle Larson. Outside of him, driving car number 9P, it's Parker Price Miller out of Kokomo, Indiana. Chalk Sticks Torsion Bars, Chalk Sticks Torsion Bars, Townline Variety, Indy Race Parts, High Performance Lubricants number 9P. And inside of row number 2 out of Canton, Illinois, the, Ace, or the uh, NOS Energy Drink, Zip Bonds, TK Concrete, Logan Contractor Supply, Elliott's Custom Trailers 55 of Chris Windham. And outside of him, your fast qualifier for this heat race out of Angola, Indiana. The Sun Dollar Restoration, Ford Performance, Sage Fruit Race Redeem Foundation number 26, Zeb Wise. Row 3 on the inside. At 11 in Indiana, the True Timber Cam, a nice green Landis block. JRC Transportation, High Performance Lubricants number 5 of Spencer Baston. And outside of him from Lubbock, Texas, the High Plains Building Division, Carbon Safety Technologies, Lubbock Record number 1 of Brenham Crouch. Row 4 on the inside, it's the 88R of Ryder LaPlanta, the Calera, Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Truck Driving Academy, LS Construction and Roofing, High Plains Building Division number 88R. And outside of them, from Liberal, Kansas, the Bybee Electric Trucks Plus, Mel Hamilton Racing, Donut Racing Engines number 36 of Jason Martin. And your final starter out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Puro Clean Realty Connect, Eclipse Claims Consulting number 29 of Emilio Hoover. Real quick, let's listen in to Cat Pendry's High Roller Playlist for the first time here tonight at Red Dirt Raceway. Little puddle of mud to start off the night here at Red Dirt Raceway. TJ Ford's wheels was started by Taylor TJ Weld to build the best no compromises Ford's wheels for high performance motorsports. We only build Ford's aluminum wheels using proprietary tooling and exclusive manufacturing processes that clearly elevate our wheels above the competition. Product quality, product safety, and exceptional customer service is what we do. We leave where others follow. Don't settle for close enough. TJ Forged. Well, Dylan, eight laps here. The top five will transfer to the feature event with the winner and the fourth, or sorry, the fastest qualifier in each heat race going to the dash. If that fastest qualifier is able to finish inside the top five, they will go to the dash. And if a fourth place starter, as you know, with the High Limit Racing rule book, the fastest qualifier in each heat race will get inverted back to fourth. If that driver can go from fourth to the win, 
they will be guaranteed the number one starting position in the dash. We call that the ace in the hole if they can get that done here in these heat races. And that would be Zeb Wise in this first heat race. He's the fourth place starter, overall fast qualifier. A little bit of track work done there during that little break, and the drivers are kind of getting it going a little bit. You can tell it's a little bit greasy right now, so it might take a lap or two to get this thing into good shape as Kyle Larson will lead from the front row here in this one next to Parker Price. Miller. Been a rough couple of races, the last couple of races for Kyle Larson here with the uh, with High Limit Racing, with Kubota High Limit Racing. Did not uh, have a good night at the Texas Motor Speedway dirt track. Got turned around early in that one, nearly went a lap down. But this is a place that is right up his alley and a good place for him to rebound after a tough night last Saturday. The racetrack looks like bottom starting to work in a little bit, trying to get that middle to high lane run in a little bit too. Racing surface is nice and wide though, so once it, once it gets worked in here, we have to think these guys will be able to move around and make some passes. We're yeah. going to wound up a little bit more here and try and blow this top layer off. Yeah, it might be, might have to wait until the second heat race, yeah. but I really do think we're going to see a lot of moving and shaking here throughout these heat races here tonight. Kyle Larson dusting off the top of the racetrack right there, coming off a of turn number four. Guys are being told by Mike Hess, our race director here, to move all over the racetrack and try and get this thing worked in. The yellow lights come on, and it looks like drivers and High Limit Racing officials are satisfied with what things look like out there right now. Eight laps, once again, the distance here, five to the feature. The winner and the fastest qualifier to transfer will move into the dash. <coughs> Dylan, are you excited to, to witness your first uh, roulette wheel dash spin tonight? I am. Well, you know, I, I've been watching, of course, uh, as much as I can this year. And uh, I, you're you're an idea man. I mean, you had all, you have a couple other ideas up here that we've been talking about uh, off mic that I think are great ideas. So you're uh, you're steering the creative ship here. Well, the thing is, I, I have a gambling problem, right? So, well, and this uh, series is uh, has it's not gambling, a, it's right? not a problem because it's helping the series. Right, so that's exactly. how you, that's how you spin it positive. That's what I'm going to tell my girlfriend. It's it's helping the series. Exactly. That's why we spend money on eight-leg parlays. <laughs> exactly. Know? Way, whatever, parlays, whatever, so. whatever it takes. Yep. Absolutely. Well, we did a couple more laps at speed there to make sure this race surface is dialed in. The sun's starting to go down. And I'll tell you what, uh, that AC back there, it says 66 on it. I did not bring a sweatshirt in here, Dylan. And it's going to get a little chilly in here tonight, I think. Might have to get some... Uh, hand warmers or something i don't know well carini but. turned it down his says or turned it up his says 71 in there so maybe yeah have him come in here and bump ours Kyle up a little bit yeah you know i actually heard yesterday that there was an issue with this ac unit behind us it was actually like the scene from happy gilmore when he when uh, adam sandler hits the ac unit and falls out of the window and lands it, that happened here yesterday during it landed setup. on someone well, it didn't land on somebody oh, okay. sorry i missed that part but it actually flew out the window and somebody had to go buy a new one and that's the one that's right behind us here in the hasty bake uh grills booth here we're going green this time by tj ford's heat race number one eight laps the top five it's kyle larson and parker price miller from the front row here we go off at turn number four we're underway at the red dirt rumble Larson gets out to the lead. Parker Price Miller challenging him for the lead down the back stretch now. PPM on the inside slides up across the nose of Larson and he'll lead the first lap. And that's a big move right there. Could put PPM into the dash later on. He knows the high limit racing format. He knows he's got to get to that top spot if he wants to be in the dash here tonight. How about Jason Martin? He started eighth on the field, the 36 car into the fourth position, looking to make his first high limit racing feature event of the season. Zeb Wise running fifth here, the Redeem 26, Spencer Baston, Brenham Crouch all right there as as well. Zeb has the final transfer spot in fifth. Based in one out, looking in there in the five car. Emilio Hoover puts the move on the number one car. Brenham Crouch and Emilio's up into the seventh position in car number 29, trying to track down the number five of Spencer Baston. Kyle Larson, four car lengths behind the 9P of Parker Price Miller, and then another five car lengths or so behind him is the 55 of Chris Wendham running in third. As Zeb Wise wants a little insurance policy here, Dylan. He's trying to track down the 36 of Jason Martin. And these two have pulled away from Spencer Baston, who runs sixth. One spot out looking in. Zeb got a little crossed up there off of four. It's brought based in closer, but he's running at running out of time. Two to go this time by for the leaders as they cross the start finish line. And if Zeb can't hang on to that fifth spot, it would put Kyle Larson into the dash. If the fastest qualifier in the heat does not transfer, it's the first and second place finishers from the heat race. So that could be big as Baston's not too far behind. The white flag, however, is waving from the flag stand. 
Parker Price Miller comfortably out in front of Kyle Larson. Chris Windham third, fourth, fifth, and sixth all lined up nose to tail. But all four, Parker Price Miller. Oh, Larson got crossed up there and saved it. PPM wins the first heat race. Second to Larson, third to Wyndham, fourth to Jason Martin, and Zeb Wise hangs on for fifth. Great run there for Jason Martin. That is cool to see for him. He struggled here the last couple of weeks, and he is able to punch it into the show straight through the heat race. But TJ Ford's heat race number one is won by that guy right there, the law firm, Parker Price Miller, car number 9P. He will go to the dash. Kyle Larson finishes up in second. Chris Windham finishes third. Jason Martin fourth. And joining Parker Price Miller on the dash is Zeb Wise in 26. Following him is Baston, Crouch, Hoover, and LaPlante. Let's go downstairs to Tony Laporte, who's probably with a very happy Jason Martin. Well, we're going to find out how happy he is. Jason Martin, I got to uh, become acquainted with you back in uh, Fort Worth at the Texas Motor Speedway. You said pretty much all you do is race. Sometimes you go fishing. You raced this thing in from the eighth position to lock in tonight's A main event. So how good does that feel? Feels pretty good from how bad we've been the last few nights. It's just nice to get to a racetrack that we've been to, have a little bit of experience with. And I just got lucky there on the start. I knew the bottom. They didn't really water it too much. And I made a couple laps around there during warm-ups there. And it was pretty stuck. So I knew I had to nail the bottom in the first couple laps. And We've just been working on this thing really hard. I can't thank Bobby Electric and, and uh, Trevor Conn. He's been really helping me on the race car. Bobby Kraft's come with me this weekend just to give me some just some guidance with this 410 deal. It's, it's a lot of power, and I'm having to change a lot of stuff from my 360 program, but uh, we're just going to keep working at it and doing what we can. Well, maybe a lot of power, Chase, but Jason Martin seems to be the man to handle it. He picks up a transfer spot here in TJ Forge, heat race number one. ASCS national champion from a year ago, Jason Martin in the show tonight. DMI Heat Race 2 rolling. DMI racing components are built with the precision of skilled ma machinists and the common sense of winning races. Located in the heart of central Pennsylvania, you can find us each week participating in the sport we love. DMI racing components sponsoring heat race number two. On the pole from Indianapolis, the Austin Energy Drink 7BC is Tyler Courtney. And on the outside of him from Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, the CD rigging JNS Classics Valley Supply 39M is Anthony Macri. Row two on the inside from Alice Springs, Northern Territory, Australia. The Roth Enterprises 83 is James McFadden. To his outside from Enum Claw, Washington, in car number nine, it's the Brumos Collection Factory Kane Shocks Kane Screen Print entry of Casey Kane. Row number three on the inside from Knoxville, Iowa now, originally from St. Mary's, New South Wales, Australia. The Dirty Air Ike's Performance Haas Hollage number 25 is Kerry Madsen. And outside of him from Oklahoma City in the 5T aboard the Sitgard Engine Oil Western Flyer Express Hample Oil Machine, that's Ryan Timms. Row four on the inside from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma as well. The Kramer Farms, Seabass Racing, Hot Rod Reels, number 78 is Tanner Kahn. To his outside, starting eighth from Overland Park, Kansas, in the Johnny Herrera Racing, J.B. Henderson Construction, Mesilla Valley Transportation, number 45X is Jace Park. And in the back, starting inside row five, didn't take a qualifying time, He's out of Lamore, California, the Honest Abe Roofing Metal Supply Depot. Number 16, T is Cole Macedo. Coming, we, to, coming oh. to green, eight laps, top five, transfer to the feature. Tyler Courtney and Anthony Macri from the front row, the high limit point leader and the winner from a few nights ago at Texas Motor Speedway's dirt track as we roll into turn number one. Already trying to go three wide, James McFadden, his first ever appearance here to the Red Dirt Raceway. Feeling a little frisky right there into turn number one. Casey Kane puts a move on Kerry Madsen for fourth. As the race for the lead, we had some contact in the back between Timms and Park. They keep on going and roll down the front straight away. Battle for the lead here on your screen on flow. Anthony Macri dials up a big slider on the inside of Tyler Courtney. Sunshine crosses over drag race down the long front stretch to the line there give lap number two to sunshine wow tyler courtney a big move there trying to keep that nos energy drink number seven bc in dash position anthony macri right back to his rear bumper down the front straight will we see a slider here no we do not he runs the bottom and it looks like it might work for him as tyler courtney's got momentum down the back straightaway maintains the top spot and goes to the bottom of the block great racing up here at the front of the field these two separating themselves slightly from third place james mcfadden casey kane is fourth and Kerry Madsen runs in the fifth spot. Wow, good stuff here still at the front of the field. Macri trying to find a way around. Number seven, BC, a Tyler Courtney, who's in the dash position. The other driver in dash spot is the nine car of Casey Kane. He runs in fourth behind James McFadden. And your final transfer right now is Kerry Madsen, but he's feeling the heat a little bit from Chase Park, the 45 X car, who does have some experience here at Red Dirt Raceway, and Park's got the bottom dialed in right now. Chase Park, the youngster from Overland Park, Kansas, still getting his feet wet in 410 racing, rolls the bottom smoothly, puts a big move on the veteran Kerry Madsen. 
Matson. This is the race for fifth final transfer spot as the white flag's out for Sunshine. Wow, good stuff here. Park right across the nose of the 25 of Kerry Matson. Matson drives it back in there, nearly gets it to the left rear. Jace Park to the checkered. It's going to be Courtney with the win. Second to Macri. Third will be McFadden. Fourth to Kane. And fifth will go to the youngster. Jace Park gets the fifth position, Dylan. That was good stuff. Great racing there and a sly move from the young racer from the state of Kansas to grab that fifth spot. Tyler Courtney, your DMI Heat Race number two winner. Anthony Macri finishes second. James McFadden, Casey Kane, and Jace Park, your five transfers. Tyler Courtney and Casey Kane, your two dash cars in Heat Race number two. Let's listen in real quick to Cap Henry's High Roller playlist for just a moment. The offspring with Let the Bad Times Roll. It's good times down there on the front straightaway for your heat race winner, Tyler Courtney. He's with Tony Laporta. He's a two-time feature winner already this season with Kubota High Limit Racing, and he's a proud partner of the Driven of a Driven to Save Lives family who we just heard from Tim Clausen a lot about. Tyler Courtney, this season with Kubota High Limit Racing has been looking really strong for you guys. Good way to kick off the midweek money series. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, uh, you know, it's still a regular night for us, too, on the, the national side of it. So, um, yeah, we got to get a little get, get a little bit more grip here, um, change some stuff there from qualifying to here. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, we just not need to drink uh, 7 BC tune back up and, uh, you know, hope we're in the dash. So that's a you know, positive for the rest of the night and hopefully put on a, a good show for these fans here in Oklahoma. Tyler Courtney starts up front. He stays out front. Jason Dillon, he is your winner of Heat Race number two. Race fans, when it comes to buying Sprint Car parts, there's only one place to shop, and that is BR Motorsports. With over, with over 250,000 parts in stock, BR Motorsports only sells the best parts by the best manufacturers like King Racing Products, MSD Ignition, Kaiser Wheels, and Triple X Chassis. To find out more, visit brmotorsports.com. Let's look at Heat Race number three. BR Motorsports Heat Race number three lineup on the pole out of St. Helena, California. The Rico Abreu Curb Agajanian Racing Art Zone, Messina Valley Transport. Wiser Agency Elite, Elite Signs, number 24 of Rico Abreu. And outside of him, driving car number 14 BC out of Clovis, California. The Driven to Save Lives, Sander Engineering, Four Seas Construction, Autry Plumbing, Sincal, number 14 BC of Corey Day. Row number two on the inside, out of Monrovia, Indiana, the Avanti Windows and Doors, Big Spring Car Wash, Water Treatment by Design, Coastal Race Parts.com, number 13 to Justin Peck. And outside of him, from Grass Valley, California, the Casey Kane Race with Mike Curb, Nap Auto Parts, Brumos Collection, Maximum Race Rolls 49, Brad Sweet. Row number three on the inside, out of Sykeston, Missouri, the Inland rigging woodland auto display marsh and cattle company number 73 of 100 percent hunter schurenberg and outside of him from fresno california the red rose transportation selzy enterprises redline oil whipple industries number 41 of dominic selzy world number four on the inside of the apollo pennsylvania the mercedes motorsports ducati of pittsburgh diesel property management number 42 of cy lynch and outside of him from jacksonville oregon that's the boss superstore shane dewalt trucking s tech usa carbon works canopy country number 18 t of tanner holmes and your final starter in this one out of Terre Haute, indiana it's the Honest Day Roofing, Metal Supply Depot, number 16T of Kevin Newton. Nine cars going five or eight laps, top five transfer here in BR Motorsports Heat Race number three. One more time, let's listen to a tune out of the High Roller playlist of Cap Henry. It's go time, it's show time. Sing it with me, everybody, let's go. Because it's one. That is Escape the Fate, one for the money. Tony Laporta, what's going on down there? You know, you've got uh, the 16T of Kevin Newton They're starting this uh, third heat race here, Chase and Dylan. I don't know if you guys just saw it out of the booth window up there, but his teammate and fellow car, the 16TH, that other car, Kevin Newton, brings the track, Cole Macedo. He did not get out for qualifying. He did not get out. He was supposed to be in that second heat race. He was just getting fired off, so obviously engine work being done behind the scenes with that 16TH. They're just trying to get him out on the track tonight. Not a good start for one of our full-time midweek competitors here as we head to the green flag in BR Motorsports here. Heat race number three with Rico Abreu and Corey Day off the front row. Here we go. Day gets a good jump around the outside. He'll lead the field in the turn number one. Rico washes up the racetrack. Here comes Brad Sweet around the outside of Dominic Selzy. Now to the inside of Rico Abreu. Side by side for the second spot. Brad Sweet now gets passed around the outside by Dominic Selzy, Dylan. Brad kind of hung in the middle there through three and four. Selzy goes around him into third. 
Sweet back to fourth and a good battle for fifth. Three cars on top of each other. Oh. Justin Peck gets displaced by Hunter Schoenberg, and he's in danger, and he does lose two. Tanner Holmes around the outside, so Peck goes from fifth to seventh and now eighth in turn one. And Tanner Holmes, oh, Holmes spins around, oh. going to collect Peck, and red flag is out. The Book Motorsports 13 car does a barrel roll in turn number two as Tanner Holmes was feeling sporty right there. Dylan was making some moves, not faking moves, as our friend Bobby Gerald would say. Gets a little bit crossed up off of the second corner, collects Justin Peck, and he goes for a little bit of a tumble there. And it looks like maybe some front-end damage on the Tanner Holmes car as it is laying a little low on the left front and a light tip over for Justin Peck, but some obvious top wing damage, and it looks like the right side nerf bar there is bent into the bodywork or the frame as well. So car's rolling okay, it appears, but uh, he'll likely want to get that top wing changed. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see if they'll make it uh, over to the work area outside the racetrack in turn number three. We've got a replay for those of you watching home on flow. It looks like Peck is immediately going over there to get that car replaced as the comp cams replay here. As Tanner Holmes makes a big move here on Hunter Schoenberg, but gets a little bit too sideways. Can't hang on to it uh, there, Dylan, and just uh, Peck with literally nowhere to go. Yeah, that, uh, that was a bad situation that ultimately ended the worst possible way from Justin Peck. Got swallowed up there by three cars and then got collected in somebody else's mistake out of turn number two. He's rolled back over to the push-off chute, and it looks like the crew is going to tend to him there as the hook's being called here for the Tanner Holmes car. Yeah, the left front arm's knocked off the 18T. That's one of many things that are probably damaged on that car. Tony Laporte, I see you down on the scene. Well, Chase, you, you don't need me. You've already got the uh, 2020 vision. That's what I was going to report to you guys. Noticeably, it's that left front torsion arm knocked off the 18T. There's a little bit of wing damage. Uh, here to the family car for Tanner Holmes and a uh, kind of a rough night to kind of go along with what's been a long week for them. They had trouble back at Texas Motor Speedway. They couldn't get hot laps in and trouble during that uh, feature. The next night at RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas, Tanner was out jogging, trying to get a workout in while he's been out here on the road and he got chased by a dog for like a quarter of a mile. So really just not a good week for the 18T here at Tanner Holmes. Yeah, tough way to see there. And Dylan, we're looking at the repairs trying to be made to Justin Peck's car there. And um, I'm guessing, I mean, not very often do you bring a wing to the work area for a heat race. And that doesn't appear to be the case for the Boot Motorsports 13. They're trying to do everything they can to, you know, piece that thing back together. Yeah, got, got a couple teams, a uh, couple team members from Chris Windham's crew down there. And when all else fails, just use the duct tape. That's what they're using to kind of strap this brace in place here. Uh, the very back bottom corner on the right side of the top wing here for Justin Peck. So you just you want it to be obviously as st those sideboards to be as stiff as possible. And they're doing what they can here just yeah. to try to get him back out. That car is going to get the same education level as Tony Laporte, the GED, the good enough degree, send it back onto the racetrack, and Justin Peck is going to try and make it back onto the speedway. It looks like push truck or push vehicle is in behind that Book Motorsports 13, and he's going to come back not quite at full strength, but he's going to at least be back onto the racetrack, which leads me to this. Justin Peck, ready to come back onto the racetrack. Tony Laporta, what's up? I was just going to continue on about Tanner Holmes. You know, that, that end of that report there, the torsion arm was knocked off, but I wasn't really joking. And the good news is Tanner is okay in that race car, and they're going to take him back to the work area. But, yeah, I was talking to him and his sister Carly, who crews on that car for Tanner. That's their family car. Of course, folks remember that Tanner was kind of called to take over the driving duties of that 1A for Shark Racing last summer when Jacob Allen stepped aside. Car's coming back to life here. But, yeah, Tanner Holmes told me they've been out on the road. They come from the West Coast chase and he's been out on the road now for a couple weeks and twice while going out trying to get a jog get a little bit of a workout in something I never do uh, he's actually been chased by two different dogs in two different areas while just trying to get a workout in so Tanner Holmes week unfortunately just goes from bad to worse here at Red Dirt Raceway uh, you know what that tells me that's why you don't run yeah, running is bad. That just shows you right there, running is bad. I did have a certain situation. I During the wintertime, Dylan, I wasn't doing much, and I took up a job as a part-time UPS uh, guy to run packages to the doors. I'll tell that. you what. Dogs, Yes. It, it's in the cartoons that dogs chase mailmen, but it literally happens, and that's why uh, they made those cartoons. I thought it was always a joke, but it's the real deal. 
Tony does bring up a, a good point about some of these teams and the time they've been on the road. And, and it's not really going to slow down anytime soon uh, with not only the high limit schedule, but some of the other national touring schedules as well, really starting to get ramped up. And, and these midweek races are, are obviously a great opportunity to, to come out and, and earn some money and, and just keep your skills sharp. But it does sometimes prohibit these guys and these crew members and drivers from getting home, getting some uh, some rest and relaxation. So it's a grind right now, even, even here in early April. Absolutely. It absolutely is. Uh, Justin Peck has made it back onto the racetrack. Just want to keep you informed on his situation there as we head back to the green flag here in BR Motorsports Heat Race number three. Corey Day straight to the outside of the racetrack and the driven to save lives. Number 14 BC with a big lead over Rico Avery, who's under fire now from Dominic Selzy. Slider in turns three and four. That's the race for second. Nice crossover for Rico Avery. Three wide for fourth behind them. You got Cy Lynch, Brad Sweet, and Hunter Schurenberg all in the mix for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Oh boy, and Schurenberg is feeling good right now now that brad sweet he throws a hail mary at dominic sells who crosses him under cy lynch behind them runs the bottom gets by hunter schoenberg into the final transfer spot and cy lynch has got the bottom dialed in right now kind of like what we saw with jace park now sells gets in front of sweet here comes cy lynch off the bottom dylan good race amongst californians for the third spot dominic sells brad sweet now big cat in danger of falling out of the transfer spot as he rips around the outside of hunter schoenberg crosses over in front of cy lynch and wants to get third as he slides dominic sells red dirt raceway is the only place where you can go from third to sixth in one lap, and Brad Sweet is experiencing that right now. Gets back by Dominic Selzy for a moment. Selzy crosses him up down the back straightaway. He's going to shove it in there into turn number three. Does not let Brad Sweet get to the bottom as the white flag is out. And here's Cy Lynch rolling the bottom. He clipped the infield tire off a of four. It may have knocked the front end out of that race car, or at least cost him some momentum. Hunter Schoenberg goes around to fifth. He wants fourth as the checkered flag flies for Corey Day. Transfer spot battle in four. Coming off a of four, Schoenberg is going to get by Brad Sweet. And so Sweet barely makes it into the feature here in this one. After starting fourth, he's going to run fifth off the final corner. We got one off the track, and that is Cy Lynch, who you mentioned hit that tractor tire coming off a of four. Wow. It's just the heat races, folks. Corey Day wins it. He's going to the dash. Rico Abreu second. Dominic Selzy third. Hunter Schoenberg fourth. Brad Sweet goes to the dash as well with a fifth place run. And then behind them, Cy Lynch, Kevin Newton, Justin Peck, Tanner Holmes. Your finishing order. Cy Lynch looks like he got a piece of the cone. But we'll go downstairs, talk to Dominic Selzy with Tony Laporta. Dominic Selzy was out there committing some California on California crime. First you went after Brad Sweet, then after the red flag, it was Rico Abreu you set your sights on. But you and Brad just had a knockdown drag out right there, brother. You don't race nationally all the time, but it sure doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. When you can race with a guy of the caliber of Brad Sweet, I mean, you know, I never once was worried I was going to, you know, get a lane shut on me or whatever. We could race pretty clean, and that's a lot of fun, man. I'm, I'm honestly a little bit winded because I kept trying to think, where is he going next, and what do I need to do to try and put him away and, you know, try and track down Rico. But good car, six to third. Hopefully we can uh, do something special in the future. He came off that guys and looked at me and said, well, if we didn't qualify 40th every night, we might not be in this position. You guys, that was a lot of fun to watch, and it's always a lot of fun to talk to Dominic Selzy. Red Dirt Raceway delivering on the hype. Final heat race getting ready to come off the push truck. This is presented by Winters Performance, who's been manufacturing speed parts for the racing industry for over 65 years. Many of the winningest sprint cars in history are equipped with Winters quick change rears and driveline components. Visit WintersPerformance.com today. Here's your lineup for heat race number four on the pole from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma in the TKH Motorsports Dahmer Powertrain. Telstar Technologies 21H, it's the Macho Man Brady Bacon. And on his outside, now calling uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma home, but originally from Minden, Nevada, the Smith TI Factory Kane, a hall of vodka number 88 is Tanner Thorson. Row two on the inside out of Visalia, California, aboard the Commercial Edge, NDT, New, New Direction Transport, BNL Holdings number eight, that's Corey Eliason. To the outside of him, starting in the fourth spot for Myerstown, Pennsylvania, and the M&M Painting and Construction, BAPS Paints, McGrewbed.com number 19 is Brent Marks. Inside of row number three, out of Hanover, Pennsylvania, the Shark Racing Pels Tire Service, RF Knox Company, the Auto Barn 1A is Jacob Allen. New is outside from Republic, Ohio, the Blue Emu, Bikini Zone, Shade Gel, Amelie Oil 2MD is Cap Henry. And in the back row, inside of row number four, from Sepulpa, Oklahoma, the Smiley's Racing Product, CSR Garage, Outlaw Wings, number 52 is Blake Hahn. And shotgun on the field, starting eighth, also from Sepulpa, Oklahoma, the same day auto repair, tire pros, SDAR Trucking 9S is Kyle Clark. Eight cars, eight laps, top five, transfer to the feature. And we get to listen to some music from Cap Henry once again here on his High Roller playlist.
That is New Medicine with Die Trying. And Dylan, uh, that High Roller playlist deal is pretty fun. Unfortunately, the, the, the drivers give us 15 songs, so we can't play them all in one night, but each driver will get two nights uh, throughout the High Limit season to uh, be the DJ of the night. Pretty cool deal that they're doing this year. I've enjoyed getting to hear everybody's taste in music, kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's definitely been weird, and it gets weirder <laughs> later on. Uh, trust me, it gets much weirder. As Brady Bacon and Tanner Thorson are going to be heading towards the green flag here in winner's performance heat race number four, the final one of the night. As we head to the green flag, and it's going to be the Macho Man jumping out with a lead straight to the top. They're trying to go four wide and turns one and two, Dylan. Brady about went over the edge there in turn number one, but makes it work, gets away with the lead down the backstretch. Battle for the second spot. Tanner Thorson inside the black 88. He'll move past Brent Marks. Marks goes to third, Elias in fourth at the end of lap one. I think Cap Henry could be sneaky good here in this heat race. This track is extremely slick like a place he won at last Friday night, the Attica Raceway Park. Here comes Cap around the bottom, trying to find a way by Corey Elias, and now he's challenged even lower by Jacob Allen, who slides by both of them. Three wide for the third spot, contact ahead of them for second. Thorson banged into the left side of Brent Marks. Marks will get away with the runner-up spot. Thorson goes back to work on the high side of four, running in the third position, and behind them, battle for fourth. Jacob Allen rolling the bottom in the 1A. Corey Elias and outside. Yeah, this is a track right up the alley of Jacob Allen when it comes to rolling the bottom of the racetrack. Here comes Tanner Thorson right to the cooker of the 19 at Brent Marks. He takes the second spot down the front straight away. Thorson wants it and slams the door on him down into turn number one and leaves Marks searching for a lane. It may cost him that third spot. He tries to slam the door on Eliason. They go three wide nearly for second. Marks gets third. Eliason over the cushion and allows Jacob Allen to go to the fourth spot. Jacob Allen might pick the pocket of all these guys here. He's going to go right by Brent Marks this time by off at turn number four. Unless Marks runs the bottom, here comes the 1A. Can he get a little sneaky down there? And it looks like he will. Jacob Allen's got second off of four. Or third, sorry. Third off four. Corey Elias in there in the middle of the eight car. Runs, or runs fifth, trying to challenge Brent Marks for fourth. White flag waving for the race leader, Brady Bacon. He's away and gone. But it's better racing here from fourth, fifth, and sixth on back. Wow, here we come to the checker this time by the race is still on for that third spot. Jacob Allen slides up, takes the air off the 19 of Brent Marks. Checkered's out for the 21H of Brady Bacon. He wins it convincingly. Tanner Hall, or sorry, Tanner Thorson in second. Oh. They get together off the fourth corner. Brent Marks and Jacob Allen. And that will send Jacob to the B main after the contact off the fourth corner between himself and the 19 of Marks. And Jacob is not going to be too pleased with that as he came in the night fifth in High Limit Racing point standings. Will he give him a tap to the back bumper? Gives him a shot in the shorts. Doesn't like it very much. Brady Bacon gets the win. He goes to the dash. Tanner Thorson with second place. Brent Marks in third. Corey Elias in fourth. And Cap Henry ends up in fifth. Brent Marks, the other car, going to the dash. Jacob Allen sixth. Blake Hahn seventh. Kyle Clark eighth. And in ninth, it was Blake Hahn. Brady Bacon with the heat race win in dominating fashion. He'll stop on the front stretch to talk to Tony Laporta. Now, Brady Bacon, this is a driver that I'm used to seeing do some serious damage but without a wing over the top of his head. Brady, you've been real busy. You're raising chickens back at home with the family. You guys are getting ready to promote another Silver Crown race at Winchester in Indiana, and you're finding time to get behind the wheel of this wing sprint car. First time all season. How good does it feel to win a heat race and lock into the A main? Oh, really good. You know, you never know how you're going to come out of the box, and uh, we were good last year, the little that we raced, and a uh, short track like this should kind of play in our favor, so I've actually never raced a sprint car with this configuration here, but uh, glad to be here in front of all the Oklahoma fans, and hopefully we can keep it up and win another one. He's from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for Brady Bacon, Chase Dillon. He joked with me back in the pit area. He said, we've tugged this car all around the country a few times this year. They wanted to hit some shows with the Outlaws in Texas. Those all got washed out. So that car's been all around the country. Now it's finally getting to stretch its legs a little bit. Yeah, I'd say it's uh, the legs have been stretched. It looked pretty good right there out front in that final heat race brought to you by Winter's Performance. Going to take a quick break here on Flow Racing. We come back. It is dash spin time here at the Red Dirt Rumble at Red Dirt Raceway in Meeker, Oklahoma. Winning doesn't just happen. You have to engineer it. You have to test it and make it better than it was the last time. Our engineers have the passion to create the parts you need the way you need them to be. Again, and again, and again. We've led this game for over 40 years, and we design, refine, and perfect every valve train part worthy of the winner's circle. 
Established in 1983, FK Rod Ends has been the industry leader for both midget and micro racing. Family owned and operated, we take pride in our products and our name because we know you value yours. Visit our website, www.fkrodends.com to find out how you can join our winning team. FK Rod Ends, to beat the best, you gotta use the best. Are you looking for the best made in the USA racing components? Look no further. DMI racing components and Bulldog quick change rears are built tough, built to win, and built in the USA. DMI components are designed, developed, produced, and shipped by experienced winning racers in the heart of central Pennsylvania. From late nights in the shop to 2 a.m. car washes, we know what it takes to compete, and we know you deserve the best. We race, you race. Let's race together. And here we are back in Meeker, Oklahoma at the Red Dirt Raceway. Ready, or we are underway with uh, the first race of the Midweek Money Series, and it has not disappointed so far. And we've only ran the heat races here at the Rudine Development in conjunction with the Race Rudine Foundation. Red Dirt Rumble presented by Bob Hurley. RV Dylan we're right now we're waiting for drivers to show up down there in the infield for our dash spin do you need to know how it works or should we tell the people or what, what's going on here well I'm you know it's my first race of the year so yeah, maybe yeah exactly the yeah. Refresher. yeah so let's let's explain a little bit so the wheel it's going to be looking if you've ever been to a casino you played roulette uh, it's got double zero it's got zero and it's got one through 36 numbers on it uh, but this one that we have here it's a little bit larger and it doesn't use a ball it uses a little flapper at the top Whatever number it lands on after a driver spins it, uh, we will go from lowest number to highest number, and that will be how we line up tonight's dash. The best number you could possibly get on the board is a double zero. Then it goes to zero as the next highest number, and then one all the way up to 36. Uh, we did see somebody get the double zero uh, the last race at RPM Speedway. That was Kerry Madsen, so he was guaranteed the front row. I'm sure that won't happen too often, but uh, it's something a little bit different. You know, just shake things up. I mean, Every other dash draw out there has just been one through eight, but this thing, it's got a lot of different uh, possibilities that could possibly happen out there. Brad's telling us to get going down there. Tony, take it away when you're ready. He sure is telling us to get going here, folks. Welcome to the Wheel of Fortune here with Kubota High Limit Racing. This will be to find out how they line up in tonight's FK Rod and Dash. And we'll also be asking our drivers our Butler Built Professional Seat Systems hot seat question of the night tonight. It was submitted by Carlin Bethel. So we're going to get started here with Parker Price Miller picking up the win in our first heat race of the night. Parker Price Miller, come on down. The driver from the great state of Indiana. Parker, before you spin, come over here. We got to ask you a question. The rule is it's got to go a half rotation around, okay? So our Butler Built Professional Seat Systems hot seat question of the night from Carlin Bethel is, where did you win your first ever race, and what do you remember about it? First ever win in a sprint car was East Bay Raceway Park in a 360, and the, what makes it so memorable was with Rick Ferkel, and uh, he's one of my like, heroes in racing and got to know uh, him pretty well. and built a pretty good relationship, so uh, that's, that one will always stick with me. Uh, so yeah, East Bay Raceway Park, first win. That's pretty cool. That's where Kubota High Limit Racing kicked up. So give that thing a good spin. It's got to go half of a rotation if you want it to count. Remember, folks, we have no idea where Parker's going to start until everyone has spun, unless, of course, he lands on double zero, and that means he automatically gets the best spot available. Yeah, here we go. Good bearings, Parker says. I've never had good bearings. So the first number landed will be a 16 for Parker Price Miller's number 16 for PPM. Corey Day will come on down next. Corey Day with the Driven to Save Lives colors on the fire suit here. Corey, Carlin Bethel wants to know, where did you win your first sprint car race and what made it memorable? 
Coos Bay, Oregon. Um, it was a it was a Western Sprint Tour race. It was a 360 race, but uh, yeah, that was my first win. That's pretty cool. He's going to try to get another one here tonight. He just picked up his first ever Kubota High Limit Racing win a few nights ago at RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas. Number 16 is what Parker Price Miller just spun. Corey Day wants a 15 or higher. If he lands on a 16, it'll go to the tiebreaker, which is qualifying times. It almost hit that 16. It's going to be a 21. So PPM is still on the inside of the front row. Tyler Courtney is going to come on over next. We talked to him after he scored his heat race victory. Sunshine, Carlin Bethel wants to know in this week's Butler Built, Butler Built Professional Seat Systems Hot Seat question, where did you win your first sprint car race and what made it memorable? I won it uh, at Atomic Speedway, actually, in a wing car for Danny Smith. Um, I think just getting to race for Danny and being that Having that be my first sprint car win probably makes that memorable. Uh, Danny's a legend in our sport, and uh, for him to give me an opportunity to you know, go and drive his car and uh, be able to win for him is uh, something I get to cherish forever. Heck of a way to get your first ever win driving for a guy like Danny Smith. Sunshine's going to give it a rip here. Tyler Courtney's already got two feature victories to his credit here in 2024 with Kubota High Limit Racing. A 16 and a 21 are what has been spun so far, and as the wheel tries to come to a stop, it's a 14. That is provisionally the inside of row number one. The Macho Man, Brady Bacon, will come on over next. Talked about, I've been seeing Brady race and win a lot, normally without a wing on his head. So, Brady, come over here. We got to know, where was your first sprint car victory at, and what do you remember about it? Uh, Creek County Speedway um, in a two-barrel 360, uh, probably like 2005, 2006. I don't remember much about it. I was... A lot of things happened at that point in my career, so it went pretty fast after that. It is so cool to see Brady Bacon here racing with us at Kubota High Limit Racing. He's going to give the wheel a spin. So far, we've seen a 16, a 21, and a 14. Brady given a little bit more of a light spin, but it does pass Mike Hess's rule of one whole half of a rotation. Oh, he was so close to the double zero. What's he going to land on? Three for Dale. Brady Bacon, that's on the inside of row number one provisionally right now. That's what provisionally means. Zeb Wise, where are you at? Your crew chief, Tyler Tessemaker, was saying, we just got to put a whole night together. You guys look like you're doing that right now. The Butler Built Professional Seat Systems hot seat question of the night is, where did you win your first sprint car race and what do you remember about it? Yeah, it was, uh, I was racing for Mike McGee and Sammy McGee at, uh, I think it was Fremont. Um, it's it's kind of memorable because I think just a weekend before, uh, I had led like the whole race and Cole Duncan like blew my doors off with his wing in the trunk through the slick. So um, yeah, I had to get some redemption there. Zeb Wise ready to give the wheel a spin. Where will it land? Nobody knows. So far we've had a 16, a 14, a 21, but Brady Bacon just hit a three. If anybody hits a double zero, they will get the best spot available. That could be right here for Zeb. No, but it's a one, which is still great. That's the lowest number inside of row number one. But again, I warn you, that is provisional. Brad Sweet, come on down. You gotta like these colors. They're they're Napa blue and yellow, right? You gotta like that. Oh, the internet's gonna light on fire now after that comment. So let's just get to the Butler Built Professional Seat Systems hot seat question. Where did you win your first sprint car race, and what do you remember about it? Uh, yeah, I think I was uh, Marysville Speedway. Uh, it was a 360 winged race. Uh, I just me remember being happy uh, to finally get a win in the sprint car. It was a challenging transition from go-karts to sprint cars, and uh, it took a while to get the first win, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. What year was that? I'm gonna say it was 2000 three or four, so uh, shows my age a little bit there. Marysville Speedway, Cali. Kalita Landis was just talking about Marysville a few nights ago. Brad Sweet gives it a spin here. A number one, that's gonna be pretty tough to beat, honestly, Brad. A number one, a three, his only hope now is the double zero. It's getting close, but it flies on by. Will he land on the three? No, the 15, the 15 for Brad Sweet. So by my math, that is fourth. Thank you very much, Tyler. Up next, his teammate and his car owner, Casey Kane, looked great in Capital Custom Trailers qualifying. Casey, I want to talk to you about that, but that'll have to wait. So instead, I ask you, where was your first sprint car win, and what do you remember about it? Uh, I, th I think it was uh, Marysville Speedway in California. That was Brad's. That can't be yours. Yeah, I heard Brad say that, but I actually think that was mine as well. That's pretty cool. Do you remember anything memorable about it? I remember it was a long time ago. It was rough, hooked up, uh, like slick straightaways, and then the rest was rough and hooked up, and 
It was, a, it was a blast. All right, well, you just celebrated a birthday, so happy belated birthday. Now give this thing a spin for me. Make sure it goes halfway around. Mike Hess is over there. He's watching. Okay, 15, 1, a 3, a 4, a 21, and a 16. Casey Kane trying to find out where he'll roll off in tonight's FK Rod Ends Dash. And it's looking like... The three for Dale, that ties him with Brady Bacon, which means we go to the tiebreaker. Brian Walker, can you tell me who gets the tiebreaker? He cannot tell me right now, so we're not going to put out any misinformation. One driver left to go here, Brent Marks. Come on over. Brent, man, that was a pretty exciting heat race you just had right there with Jacob Allen. So I want to know from Butler Built Professional Seat Systems, hot seat question of the night, where did you win your first sprint car race, and what do you remember about it? Uh, would have been Lincoln Speedway, the uh, Weldon Sterner Memorial, um, 2010. So I started racing in uh, sprint cars in 2009 and, and uh, got that win there in my second year. So that one was pretty special. It was a you know, huge transition for, for us out of micro sprints and the 410 sprint car racing. And, and um, you know, it was great to get a win uh, so early in my career there. So, um, you know, Lincoln Speedway is a you know, great racetrack back in Pennsylvania. And, Puts on some really good races, and um, you know this track. I think tonight's going to put on some really good races, and you know the fourth heat race there showed uh, what I think it's going to be like. I think you're right. I think we are going to see a lot of great racing tonight. I love going to Lincoln Speedway myself. It's got to go a half away around here, one full half rotation. I think that's an oxymoron. Right now, the inside of the front row belongs to Zeb Wise, who rolled or who spun a one. And the boys in the truck are going to help me out here, I think, to give me a lineup as quick as they have it. But our final spin of the night, could it be the double zero? Nope. No, electrifying, however close that was. That is the 36, and that will put Brent Marks on the uh, back of tonight's FK Rod Ends Dash. What I can tell you, folks, is that the Rudy number 26 of Zeb Wise will lead them to the green flag. And here's the rest of that lineup. It's going to be Zeb Wise and Casey Kane on the front row. The Macho Man, Brady Bacon, and Tyler Courtney in row two. Brad Sweet and Parker Price Miller will share row three. And Corey Day and Brent Marks make up row number four. That's how we'll go racing in the FK Rod Ends Dash. Good stuff there, Tony Laporta. The wheel not disappointing with a couple of close calls there at the double zero and one tiebreaker. As uh, let's take a look real quick if you're watching home on Flow, what is coming up on Flow Racing? different races. We're not talking just about Kubota High Limit Racing. We're talking about the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series at Georgetown, Hankerstown, and Port Royal. A swing through the Northeast, April 26th through the 28th. Also, I'm excited for this one. USAC National Midgets at the Kokomo Grand Prix, April 26th and 27th, Kokomo Speedway. American Flat Track Motorcycles, Texas Motor Speedway, April 27th. The Spring Sizzler at Stafford Motor Speedway, April 27th and 28th. NASCAR Weekly Racing from Bowman Gray Stadium, April 27th. And the Keith Kaufman Classic at Port Royal Speed with the Wing 410 Sprint Cars on April 27th as well. Let's take a break here on Flow Racing. When we come back, it is dash time here at the Red Dirt Rumble.